What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the round two coverage of the 2019 Flying Pig Open presented by Play It Again Sports. I'm Scotty Saylor here with Caleb Clifton. Um, up to this point, Jeremiah Krauss has been on fire. He's nine down for the round through the front ten. Um, kind of separating himself from the card. He's got three strokes on Corey and Jeff and Brad are just a little bit behind the pace. Yeah, so the back the back 10 here will be pretty scorable also. Um, so we'll see if he can keep that pace going and maybe come home with the victory at the end of the round, so. Definitely of the 10s, the back 10 is probably the harder. Um, with the 10 poles being on the front, a lot of them are a little bit shorter and scorable, but starting off here, we got hole 11, 277 feet, it's par three. Um, the typical player you're probably going to see a lot of these guys go with is just the forehand hyzer. The green is pretty fast on the back end, so speed control is pretty important coming into this green. Yeah, you're going to want to just get something out to the left and let it fade back around these trees. The basket's tucked um, out to the right behind the, the trees that you see there off the tee. So. And to rehash, it is pretty windy. The, calm is, the wind looks pretty calm right now. You're not seeing um, many shirts going around or anything, but... This day was pretty windy, so. Oh, Brad with the unfortunate rollaway here. I mean, that that was in circle. Looking at a two putt, and now he may be uh, looking to lay up from there because of the slope of the green there. As I mentioned, the forehand does bring in the rollaway, but it's really the best way to get to the green. So, as you see, Corey's trying to come in with a little bit of a steeper angle, try to knife it in and have it stop, not really skip. So here's the other line that you'll see a lot on this hole is just the, uh, the backhand take it out wide on an Anheuser and, and let it slide in there towards the towards the hole. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it high enough as you see him waving it up in the air. So, and This right here is an absolute death putt. I'm curious to see if he will run this or not. Give it a little bit of a floaty bid. Oh, yeah. And sit. A little yeah, that's go. a good run for there because behind that green, if you roll, you're looking at maybe a 30-foot putt with about, say, probably like 8 feet of elevation change. Definitely not something you want coming back for par. Yeah, just like the rest of Harbin, as you can see, that rough is very uh, thick down there. So if you get in there, it could be a uh, struggle to get back out and save par. Corey lining up for the only two on the card here. Oh, and air balls it. Just leaves it out right. Everybody looked like they stayed close, though. Didn't have too many rollaways on the putts. So it looks like we'll be tapping in all pars here. It's definitely a tough hole, but I think... Uh, might be losing a stroke there to maybe some of the other individuals in the NPO field. Definitely say so. It's a pretty straightforward hyzer for a lot of these guys, but typically you'll have a ripping headwind on that hole, which makes it play a little bit more difficult. Hole 12, 320 feet, par 3. Again, another hole that is kind of a fun line to shoot. It's really almost a fairway, maybe even a mid-range that's just kind of on a turnover that will stall out and finish straight. Yeah. Jeremiah looks like he's probably throwing a mid-range here. Nice and floaty and gets it down there Ooh. in the circle. Maybe Absolutely. Even Maybe even in a bullseye, yeah. If you look down the fairway, there's one bushy tree kind of right where the ideal line is. That's really what you're trying to beat here because being behind that is almost jail. Brad stalls out a little bit there, but he'll have an open, clean look uh, to try and hit a birdie there. Corey throwing something a little slower, probably, I'm not sure if it's a putter or a mid-range, but that is, oh, that's a fortunate, oh, a fortunate kick. kick, because in there, there's almost no line for a putt. Vandermark looking to get some flex out of that and keep it going straight. Get around that. Yeah, he'll be inside the circle as well, just right next to Brad, looking for two. Corey again from about circle's edge. Looking to cash his putt. There we go. There you go. Yeah, he's missed a few of those today, but he dials that one in and capitalizes on the, the birdie opportunity. So, Oh, Brad with a nice putt. Yeah. If you've been watching, or if you watched the front 10 coverage, um, Jeremiah was really putting on. Oh, oh no. no. That's unfortunate. That was a dagger right in the heart Absolutely. of the chains. Jeremiah was putting on a heater, and everybody kind of started to fall off the pace. Corey was keeping up pretty well with him, but 
getting that birdie and keeping up the pace with Jeremiah really is a good thing to get. Hole 13, it's going to be pretty simple, 255 feet. Um, the only really contender you have on this hole is that big bushy tree out to the right. Might catch a little hyzer coming into the green, but um, they should have no problem with this hole here. Yeah, i got to imagine we're going to see a couple birdies here. Yeah. Really nothing coming in the way, just a I'll simple backhand hyzer. Yeah, that's what I was saying, that, that bush will catch your, your disc sometimes if you leave it too low. Yeah, that is the one thing. Brad looking to take it out of play entirely. He seems to like the forehand for the short shots, and that will be essentially a drop-in birdie for him. It's a nice shot. Yeah, Corey's going to do the same thing here with a little forehand flick out to the left. Looking Looks like he kind of sawed it off a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a tough putt in there, and he's got to reach in there and try to straddle out. And you do have a pretty low ceiling in that putt as well to contend with. This looks great, though. Yeah, a little short, but right in front of the big bush and having a putt for two. Yeah, being short of that bush is definitely the mistake to make. Yeah, I think Vandermark uh, on that last hole with that spit out, that might be a game changer for him. That might have just taken all the wind out of his sails for the rest of the round. I mean, with everybody else doing that hole. We'll see what he can do on these next few holes, though. Corey just leaving his birdie putt out wide. It's going to have a decent comebacker for his par. Let's see if he can seal the deal here and keep it in the basket. Yep. There you go. <laughs> He's happy about He's that He's happy it taken. caught. Definitely um, definitely way a good way to bounce back from that spit out. Jeremiah dropping in his par. Oh, oh wow. no. That's tough to take on a hole like this, a little 255, par three. Brad taps in his birdie, which will actually tie him up with Corey and Jeff now, all of which are down four strokes to Jeremiah. So we got a hole 14 here, another another short, short maybe gettable hole. Um, plays pretty downhill. These these uh, This lead card's definitely going to want to get this, this hole here, so... Again, there's just like any other hole out here, there's two predominant lines. There's the big hyzer, which Brad is showing us here, which I'm not sure where his ended up. Or there's the straight down the middle shot. You can throw backhand or forehand here, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Yeah, these big trees will grab your disc, though. They're nice and bushy, so. Yeah, the gap is pretty tight off the tee, but I feel like it's the more rewarding of the two. That's probably a good tree to hit there. That's only really about 10 feet from the basket, so depending on where he finished, he'll be looking pretty good for birdie. And then Corey going with a flick. Right up the gap. Yep. Nice skip right bullseye. inside the bullseye. This important shot for him with Jeremiah probably being close to match. Ooh, Ooh. off the top. Yeah, that's a good run from Jeff. And he stayed close, I believe, so have an easy par comebacker. Brad, that's Brad's a heating up now. huge putt, yes. You can see right there, he stayed close, but when you get into the woods here, really even if it's just a standalone tree like this, any putt can become tough. And with that, looks like Brad and Corey both are going to gain a stroke on Jeremiah. Hole 15, 390 feet, par 3, playing a little bit downhill. There's a straight shot up the gap with really anything you want. It plays downhill, so you just got to get something that'll finish straight. Or for the righties, there's the big hyzer over to the uh, right. Brad uh, maybe got this in the wind a little bit too much, and it's going to be over in one's fairway, or close to one's fairway. Yeah, this is another one I remember. We had a ripping headwind on this hole. This was almost unreachable for most of the field in this type of wind. Yeah, Corey's going to take that probably wide hyzer line, yeah. Take the wind, try to take the wind out of play as much as possible and just let something float back. Get a nice high. This is looking really well as long as it's not deep. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit deep. Might be middle of circle two. We'll be looking at a birdie, though. Vandermark also going with the hyzer line. That looks like the wind's grabbing it a little bit, but it's fighting back, so. Wide is fine. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Great hit. Yep. Bullseye, that's great. Jeremiah looking to follow suit. See if it does the same. If it pushes, it's looking pretty good as well. 
Yep. Yeah, inside the circle. Brad just pitching up to give himself a short putt for his par. Corey with a long putt for his two. Yeah, definitely circle two putt here. It would be huge if he could cash in on this after taking that four on that little short hole. Just leaves it a bit low, car to par. Jeremiah again to grab another stroke on Corey and Brad. Yep. Just nails it in there, so he'll be Just happy like that. that. Everybody's tied up at second place again, with Jeff being parked and provided Brad taps this in. Which he does. Brad just walks up and puts it in the basket. So when you've been playing for as long as him, it's a no thought thing. I'm sure he's made that putt plenty of times. And we're gonna let Vandermark tap out with his two from about four and a half feet away. I wouldn't even say four and a half feet. I think he'd touch it from there. Take the wind out <laughs> of the out of the equation when you're that close. Oh yeah. Hole three, or I mean hole sixteen, par three, three hundred feet. Again, just a simple righty hyzer for most of this card. There'll be one bushy tree off to the right that you're wanting to miss. You can either go around it high or go inside of it with like a mid range. Jeff looking like he's going to go around it. Yeah, it does play a little uphill, so it's going to require a little bit more pump, but it's no problem for these guys. Yeah, inside the circle for his birdie. Looking to keep pace and get a couple strokes on Jeremiah, who's four up on the whole card right now. It's crazy. There's a three-way tie, and then Jeremiah's just up there by himself playing easy golf. Ooh, at least Jeremiah was a little ball. bit long. So now you got to imagine the rest of the competitors on the card are definitely looking to get a stroke here on him, being a little bit further away than you'd like for birdie on this hole. That's an interesting line. He just kind of puts one up the middle on a little ante and lets it flex back right towards the basket. So Just right inside the bullseye. Bullseye hits are definitely nice right now. With five holes left to gain strokes on Jeremiah, you're looking to get every one that you can. Corey looking wide. If it has the number, it's fine. Might be yeah. just a hair outside the circle, maybe circle's edge. Oh, just sailed it a little bit. See if Jeremiah can keep pace and nope. just a little bit low off the pole. Alright, so here's a stroke on Jeremiah, if he can put this away. Oh, oh no. You see, you know what he knows what that one means to make, to split the tie between him, Jeff, and Corey. So Brad's going to card the uh, the only birdie here um, with the drop in from Bullseye. So that's uh, good for him. Yeah, he'll separate himself from that three way tie for second place. Yeah, maybe give him some momentum going into these next few holes. There's some uh, some attackable ones here. So we're moving on to hole 17, 290 feet uphill again. Uh, lots of elevation changes out at Harbin, and it's going to be a par three. So see what he can do here with his little forehand flick. This hole is definitely a tough one to get close unless you have a big sidearm like Brad. Over the top is definitely the favorable play if you have the distance, but that is typical for the landing zone for whether you go over the top or the low sidearm as well. So Vandenberg's going to take the high hyzer and, and let it stall out and push left and hope that it gets through, and it does. Oh, yeah. Great shot. That play is also dangerous. Around the basket, there's several clusters of trees that are thick, as we keep reiterating, that can easily take par even out of the equation sometimes. Yeah, just like that right there. I mean, perfect example. That's going to be a, a tough three from there, possibly, just because of that, how thick that is. And He's going to go and skyrocket and flight right here. So Yeah, it looks like he's throwing an onyx. And yeah. fights through. Yeah, he's looking well for a birdie here. Yeah, that's the risk reward with that line. You could either end up on the backside and trapped, or you could be in the circle looking at an easy two. So, this is the difficult part of this approach. The ceiling's pretty low, getting up towards the basket. You see Brad going to a knee, and trying to get as much ceiling as he can, and still yeah. catches it. And it's uphill, so you're trying to get it up, the nose up a little bit to, to let it get quite up the hill. So, 
Nice putt by Jeremiah. Looks like that was for his par, so he must have pitched around to there. As we said before, it can really take par out of equation if that's your comebacker for par. Yeah, so we will have a uh, Jeremiah, or I'm sorry, Corey and um, Vandermark with the birdies here. Tying it back up, second place again. Just can't find any separation out here. All these holes are gettable. You really have to string something together to pull yourself away. Um, this one, no exception. Hole 18, 240. Uh, just straight uphill, really. Not much in the way. That tree is in the way if you pull it a bit too far, which oh. it looks like Jeff has. But it looks like he stayed on the edge and will have a putt. Corey's going to go with the uh, sidearm up the hill and just put it up there close and make an easy putt. Tall stuff. Yeah, Looking. so he's about pin high, maybe 15, 20 feet away. Yeah. Brad looking to take the same line with a little faster disc. Left it a little bit inside, but... Oh, this vine might come into play. He might have to straddle out. Yeah. This Jeremiah looks looking really good here. Yeah. Just a little bit short of it. Yep. Well inside the circle for his birdie putt. Looks like Jeff has the same kind of vines to deal with here. Yeah, he's just going to try to find a hole and poke one through and grab some metal, hopefully. Yep. Just, just go a straight through. Oh. A little flick of the wrist, and unfortunately, he grabs the right side and spits out. So, he's just been a hair off on these putts all day. Definitely could have got a couple more strokes on the putting green, but with the wind, it's easy to leave some a little left or right. Corey cashes in on the birdie there. Brad with the straddle uh -huh. and catches the front. Unfortunately, just a little bit low. Jeremiah to distance himself again. Yeah, and Corey's going to pull away from Jeff and Brad there with that birdie by a stroke. So, solo second place at that point. Yeah, and with two hole left, Jeremiah has a three-stroke lead. Definitely he's probably feeling pretty comfortable right now, especially considering the holes that are coming up. Jeff taps in his par. We'll move on to hole 19, 363 feet. It's par three. Playing pretty far downhill. Um, again, two ways to attack this hole. Most commonly, it's going to be the hyzer over the right side. It plays into the hillside by the basket, and is probably the most wide open line. Or you could also see someone go down the middle, straight at the basket. Yeah, it looks like Corey might be going with a fairway here. Probably that same onyx he yeah. threw on 17. And a little bit to the right, and maybe caught up in some of that thick stuff over there. So that'll be interesting to see what his line looks like. Jeremiah also lining the Heiser lineup. Yeah, he's been throwing this disc a lot too. I'm not sure what it is, but... It's overstable when it's been working for him. In the wind, it's sometimes best just to simplify things and go with what you know is going to work. Banner mark for the Heiser also. Oh, might be a little right, but we'll see if it works back. Yeah, that'll oh, work yeah. perfectly. Well inside the circle for his birdie. Brad looking like he's lining oh. low. Yeah, that might be a little tough over there. It's going to be a... Looks like he got through it, actually, looking straight oh, at yeah. it. Easy. Three from there, maybe even a birdie putt here. Definitely a long putt, but Brad's no stranger to drawing metal from here. Ooh, ooh just over the basket. It looked like the headwind kind of rose him. All right, Jeremiah to hit another birdie. Let's see if he can put it in there. Yep. Yes, sir. And he knows... Great putt. He knows what that means. He's excited with one hole left. Looking at three, possibly four strokes to give on this last hole to secure himself the win. Oh, oh no. Unfortunately, that was just a little high, but still hit it right in the center. So that could be a 50-50 whether it sticks or not. And that's a big putt for Jeff. Put himself back into a tie for second place with Corey. And you got to imagine this is a two, maybe even a three-horse race for second place right now, depending on how everybody's drives shape up on this last hole. And this tee shot is rather important. So we got hole 20, the last hole of the tournament. Um, 480 feet, dog leg right. Uh, plays a little bit downhill, so these guys are going to be pumping out something and trying to get down there for a look. Par four, so maybe even an eagle look here. Yeah, big Anheuser's definitely the play here for the righty. It shapes the fairway very well. This has a really nice angle on if it flexes out and beats all these Christmas trees on the right. 
He's well down there, pass pin high. He might have a gap straight through those trees to the basket. Secure an easy three. Yeah, so this is the line to go over top of these trees with something high um, and then just have it flex out at the end and hopefully put you in the middle of the fairway or even close to the basket. Yeah, Jeff, a little bit behind that tree, but he might have a straight side arm or even a little backhand flip up to it. Corey definitely looking to get aggressive here after watching Jeff's drive. He's got it wide. He just has to hold. Oh, this is looking really good. Yeah, definitely the max distance flight there. Big old S with this stable finish at the end, so he might have a little jump putt down the hill at it for a two. Yeah, definitely giving himself a chance to break that tie for second place. And Brad's just going to take the uh, the more safe route, I would I would say, out of those four shots and just put one down there for a birdie lot look. Yeah, I'll give him about 200 feet to the basket. Should just be a routine up and down for him. And Jeff needs to keep this one close to give himself a chance to maintain second place. Just going to try to spike it in there. Yeah. It's in the cut. Probably looking about circle's edge putt here. Brad laying up to take his three. Content with his placing right now. See, Jeremiah did have a gap pitched up. So he's excited. I mean, that pretty much seals the deal for him there. He's going to drop in for the win for the 2019 Flying Pig Open um, out here at Harbin. And then the other round was played at Mount Airy. So it's a huge win for him, I'm sure. Corey leaving his bid for second place just a little bit low and right. Jeff, ooh, misses his putt. It's going to fall back to a tie for third place, ending this putt with Brad. So Jeff cards the par, and we're going to have a few birdies here. So, so Corey will tap in for solo second place, pending any movement from the chase card. And Jeremiah, for the win, taps in for the win. Finished at 25 under, yeah. over 40 holes. Great round from him. Like we mentioned earlier, he uh, shot nine down through 10 on the front and then uh, came back here and just kept that pace moving and, and held his lead. So um, final standings, we got Jeremiah at 25. Matt Blakely jumped up and uh, looks like he had a, a good round and tied second for at 21 down with Corey Ellis. And then Jeff and Brad finished with tied with Calvin Caldwell at uh, negative 20. Yeah, I believe Calvin and Blake both were on Blakely were both on the chase card and shot good rounds at Harbin to move himself up to a higher spot in cash. So thanks for tuning in to another Joe Jab production. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, and share all the social media and um, YouTube postings, and uh, keep an eye out for some future broadcasts.